Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice the radio. So today, we need to carry on our look at the complete history of the Pokemon trading card game, and we have reached all the way to Unseen Forces. Now, Unseen Forces was a very weird set, because looking down the set list, I am seeing nothing but Gen 2 Pokemon, even though, as we've seen from previous sets, this was very much released in the Gen 3 era. But we've got Umbreon, we've got Porygon 2, we've got all of the good stuff we're going to see in the rest of this video. What I will say is... Where's my Dom fan? Like, I'm cool if you're going to give me a Gen 2 theme set. Let's do this. But don't give me a Gen 2 theme set and then admit to put a Don fan in there. And okay, when Pokemon were making these cards, maybe they weren't thinking, look, 15 years in the future, some angry Cornish boy is going to be ranting about the fact that we didn't put a Don fan in there. But he is, ladies and gentlemen. He is. Hey-ho. Still a very fun set, mind you, so I'll probably forgive it and get over it in time. Now, this was released in Japan on April the 8th, 2005, and was then released in English, that is US, Europe, etc., on August the 22nd, 2005. So we're talking a 15-year-old set at this stage. Now, what was very cool about this, and we don't see this very often, but the logo actually meant something. We see it occasionally... But if you look at the logo of Unseen Forces, you will see that it is literally Lugia's wing and Ho-Oh's wing just crossed over each other. Which is very, very cool. Oh, speaking of which, spam the like button on this one, would you please? Let's, um, I get lots of good feedback about these videos, but the views aren't amazing. Let's fix that, ladies and gentlemen. Let's fix it. Now, one thing that is also very, very cool is that they finally, finally completed the unknown. You see, back in the Neo sets, we got a bunch of unknown cards, but we never got Unknown R. Now, Unknown R did exist, but Unknown R was a promo card that came out in Japan, and it never received a print outside of Japan. We never got it, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the good news is we finally did get Unknown R in this set. But it wasn't just Unknown R. We actually got all 28 unknown. 26 plus question mark plus exclamation mark. Hence 28 unknown. And they were their own little subset. And they even had their own numbering something out of 28. Although they were numbered R out of 28 and question mark out of 28. Which is very strange. But hey ho, that's the way they did it. And according to the lovely folks over at Bulbapedia, a very good website I use for research. The reverse hollow slot in every fifth pack was replaced by one of the unknown. What that means is if you're trying to complete a set of unseen forces... Trying to collect all 28 of those unknown will make it significantly more difficult. It is about the same size we would be expecting, plus 28 unknown. So we end up at 145, which is a very big set for the time. And we're talking one in five packs, and then there's 28 to collect. It's, it's a little bit of a mission, ladies and gentlemen. But if you're a proper collector, I'm sure you will be fine. Now, it was also the final set to feature owner's Pokemon EX. So, for instance, I mean, really, we only had the one in this particular set. We had the secret rare Rockets Persian EX. After that, they were their own Pokemon. And while we're here, we should probably mention that that was also the box topper for the set. So if you bought yourself a box of Unseen Forces, you'd get Rockets Persian EX. Of course, that's a little bit weird because it means that even though it's a secret rare and is available in the set as a secret rare, every single box has one plus the ones that come as a secret rare, which kind of hurts the rarity of it. There was another secret rare incidentally. There was a secret rare Celebi EX, which was, of course, then significantly rarer. And we did see the return of Pokemon Stars in this set. There weren't any in EX Emerald, although as explained in the previous set, that is because we basically made up that set. <laughs> to have something that coincided with the video game, which I still find very amusing. So, Pokemon Stars were back, and we saw ourselves just the legendary Beast Trio. Entei Star, Raikou Star, and Suicune Star.
Yeah, people went a little bit crazy for the Pokemon stars. They were very sought after cards, though the three of those specifically saw very little play. Now, this might be a decent time to talk about the most expensive cards in the set, and it is these stars, the Suicune, Entei, and Raikou star. If you can pick these up for $200, you're doing pretty well. But there was actually another one, Lugia EX also comes in at about $200. And there are several reasons why Lugia is so expensive. The stars are just the stars, right? The stars are stupidly rare, they're always going to be stupidly expensive. Lugia EX is not as rare as the Pokemon stars. But it is one of the best cards in a set, it's extremely playable. And Lugia is an exceptionally popular Pokemon, and both of those facts push it up to the value of a significantly rarer Pokemon star. And if we want to look at the pre-release promo, the pre-release promo for this particular set was a Bayleaf. Cool. Now, in terms of theme decks, it had to be Ho-Oh and Lugia, didn't it? We've got Golden Sky and Silvery Ocean. Starting off with Golden Sky, this was the Ho-Oh themed theme deck, and we did see ourselves a Fire and Fighting theme deck with a Hollow Ho-Oh and non-Hollow versions of Typhlosion and Chansey. And interesting to note that the Hollow Ho-Oh was exclusive to the deck, it was a non-Hollow in the set, and the non-Hollow Typhlosion was exclusive to the deck, because in the set properly, it was only a hollow. Moving over to Silvery Ocean, this was the Lugia theme deck, and this was a Grass Psychic deck. And you got yourself a hollow Lugia and non hollow versions of Meganium and Stantler. And once again, the Lugia as a hollow was exclusive to the theme deck, non hollow in the set. And the Meganium, the fully evolved first partner Pokemon, non hollow was exclusive to the deck. It was only a hollow in the set. Now, we will do what we usually do here and just count through all the EXs nice and quickly. When we look at the old sets, a lot of people want to know about the EXs. So we will do, well, let, let, let's call it a little bit of a flyby. We're not going to do a flyby of all 28 unknown because that would be, um, that would take an exceptionally long time. But if anybody really wants a video where I look at all 28 unknown from this set, let me know and I'll be happy to make it. So we saw Blissey EX, 160 HP is absolutely gigantic, and it had an ability that healed all of your Pokemon. It's kind of what Blissey does. Espeon EX was a very good card that we're going to come back to in just a moment. Feraligator EX, when active, did turn off all non-EX Poker Powers and Poker Bodies, which was very, very cool, though didn't see a huge amount of play. Ho-Oh EX had a lovely poker power, whereby when it's knocked out, you got to move two energy to your other Pokemon. And of course, it did what it often does, had an attack which does more damage for each type of basic energy on it. Very cool. Wasn't particularly good, unfortunately. Lugia EX was an over-the-top phenomenal card. We will get back to it shortly. Meganium EX was a very cool card that did launch a little bit of a rogue deck we'll be looking at in a moment. Politoed EX was a very cool little hit and run Pokemon. Do some damage, switch to the bench. Again, we'll get more to that in a moment. Sizzle EX did more damage if Sizzle's HP was 60 or less, which could be very, very cool. Also preyed on evolved Pokemon. Steelix EX was another very good card that we're going to come back to very shortly. Typhlosion EX let you search for a whole bunch of fire energy when you evolved into it. One for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. That could get energy out quickly. Tyranitar EX had four attacks. We don't see that very often, so there's another. I know, I know we're going to do a video about this in the not-too-distant future, but one of the very rare Pokemon that had four attacks. Umbreon EX was a very, very nice Pokemon. We're going to come back to in a moment. Lots of play. So... As opposed to previous sets, we saw lots of good EXs here. By my estimation, there were six EXs in this set that were very, very playable. 
Oh, you also had the secret rares, of course, rockets. Persian EX let you search for rockets or dark Pokemon using its poker power, which was cool. And Celebi EX, which was just generally pretty bad. Sorry. It was really flippy. And not that good when you flipped heads. Uh, I suppose one damage counter on each of your opponent's Pokemon and taking one off of each of yours. But come on, 70 HP on a Pokemon which just doesn't have good attacks. That's embarrassing, Celebi. Now, in terms of the best cards in the set, this was a very good set. And we have a bunch of cards to talk about. But let's start off with Lugia EX. You see, Lugia was a very, very good card. It had the Pokeball E Silver Sparkle. If it is damaged by an attack when active, flip a coin. If heads, you get to put an energy card back into their hand. But one fire, one water, one lightning energy, 200 damage. Yeah, you had to discard those free energy, but 200 damage. I mean, I've been showing you, I, I just showed you Blissey, right? Blissey was a stage one with 160 HP, and that was ridiculous. This does 200 damage. Lugia was your in-your-face, I can knock out anything Pokemon. But it did pair very well with a Steelix. Now, Steelix had a Pokebody, which meant it couldn't be poisoned, and free energy 70 damage. But more important was two fighting, two colorless. You discard the two fighting and do 100 damage to one of your Pokemon. Might I suggest, ooh, I don't know, let's say the Pidgeot that lets you search for any card in your deck was a phenomenal Pokemon and sat on the bench with 100 HP. That's one I'd be talking about. Ariados was a very nice Pokemon. Primarily played for the attack Reactive Poison, 10 damage base, plus 30 more for each special energy affecting the defending Pokemon. Now, it wouldn't actually be good when Unseen Forces came out. You see, it had to wait for Flareon. When Delta Species came out, which was the very next set we'll get there shortly, next week in fact. Uh, there might be a lot of reveals next week, but you know, I don't think there'll be too many. I think we'll be fine. So Flareon EX had the poker power Evolutionary Flame. Once during your turn, when you play Flareon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may choose one of the defending Pokemon. That Pokemon is now burned and confused. Now, of course, remember that burn takes damage between turns. So Ariados is now doing 70 damage for a single energy plus the burn damage. It became one of the best decks in the game. We had to wait a little while but then it became awesome. Speaking of which, Umbreon EX was very, very good. It had the poker power Dark Ring. When you played Umbreon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you got to switch one of their bench with their active. Now, if you were playing two on two, they switched which active came out, but you chose the Pokemon that came from the bench into the active. This was phenomenal. It, it's gusting. And gusting is good, ladies and gentlemen. Really good. To be fair, one energy, 20 damage, and it stopped the defending Pokemon retreating or using poker powers was kind of fun. Could trap them in the active, especially if they relied on poker powers. But really here it was for the poker power itself. Gusting has always been good. And if we're talking Umbreon EX, it would be a little bit rude not to talk Espeon EX. When you play this from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, yeah, they all have these kind of abilities, you may choose one evolved Pokemon on your opponent's bench and return the highest stage evolution back to their hand. So if they've got enough damage on to KO the stage 1 but not the stage 2, put the stage 2 in their hand, they go down in your face. Also, 2 energy, 30 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon. 3 energy, 60 damage, plus 30 more for each trainer card they had in play. Could be fun, but again, this was a really nice little tech for the Poker Power. Now, Politoed was another really good one, and Politoed was basically its own deck. It had a bunch of stuff. I mean, for 2 energy, you actually did 80 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon as long as it was a stage 2, and it didn't even have to be active. For 4 energy, you did 70 damage, but if Politoed EX had more remaining HP than the defending Pokemon, you did 120, bearing in mind that 150 you had very high HP, so you'd often do 120, 
but really it was here for the attack punch and run. Free energy, 40 damage, switch this Pokemon with one of your bench. So what you would do is switch to the bench and you would whack one of those fossils up. Uh, I don't know, let's say Claw Fossil. 40 HP Pokemon as a trainer card, but when it's knocked out, you didn't give up a prize. Also, when Claw Fossil is damaged, you put one damage on the attacking Pokemon. So, and I mean, between Claw Fossil, right? We had Claw Fossil at the time, we had Root Fossil at the time, and we had Mysterious Fossil at the time, which meant you basically had 12 cards because you could play four of each. Oh. Yeah, that, that basically gave you 12 options to chuck in the active for your opponent to KO without taking a prize. That was kind of fun. That's what made Politoed good. And go on then, let's carry on talking about EXs. There's one more that was really good in this set. It was Meganium EX. Now this was here primarily for the ability. And the ability said, once during your turn, you may attach a grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. If you do, remove one damage counter from that Pokemon. So it was a little bit of healing, but mostly it just let you attach a second energy during your turn. And energy acceleration is good. Just ask Blastoise EX, another Pokemon we're going to talk about in just a moment. What I find really weird, check out the artwork on this Meganium and compare it to the artwork on the other Meganium, the non-EX from the set, and the artwork on Bailey from the set. What, what's going on? Why have they all got the same pose? Little bit weird to me, ladies and gentlemen. Little bit weird to me. Now, moving away from EXs, the Macargo from this set was very nice. It had a Pokemon e dual armor, so if it had any fighting energy attached to it, it was a fighting as well as a fire, which means you were covering two weaknesses, and fighting was a pretty big weakness at the time. As for the attacks, I mean, two energy, 30 damage, and your opponent has to flip heads to attack next turn was kind of fun. Free energy, 72 in EX. Bearing in mind, 140, not many EXs got above that. So for free energy, you could KO basically any weak EX. Weak to fire or fighting. That made it a really nice tech that popped up in a bunch of decks. Now, Jinx is kind of a weird one to me, because Jinx had the Pokemon in stages of evolution. As long as it is an evolved Pokemon, you prevent all effective attacks done to Jinx, excluding damage, and it had no weakness. And of course, there was a Smoochum in the set that you could evolve into Jinx. But that wasn't why we played it. What we actually did was we copied it using Mew EX, and we copied it for the attack Pure Power. Place four damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. And what you would essentially do is you would use these Mew EX decks to lock your opponent out the game. And then you would spread damage around, never KOing anything. Because remember, if you took too many prizes too early, you became very vulnerable to Rocket's Admin. That would give you a new hand equal to your remaining prizes. And then you would use this attack to take all six prizes in one turn. To make sure that you would never end up being vulnerable to Rocket's Admin. Very cool Pokemon. But it really was a, a Mew copy Pokemon, rather than a Pokemon in its own right. Slow King was also a rather nice Pokemon from the set. It let you search your deck for a Pokemon tool card once during your turn. Why was that good? Because of Dark Slow King. You see, Dark Slow King came around with the attack Litter that did 20 damage for 2 energy. But you could discard up to 2 Pokemon tool cards or secret machine cards from your hand, doing 30 more for each one you discarded. Dark Slow King really needed to have Pokemon tools in hand. Slow King got those tools out. Go team! Also, 2 energy, 20 damage, plus 10 more for each Pokemon tool in your discard, up to a maximum 80 damage, 60 added plus a 20 base. So it was even a really nice backup attacker with Dark Slow King. Cool. Now, in terms of the unknown, I think it is worth pointing out, they did not all have the same attack. They all had the same ability. So, let's look at Unknown Eye, just as a random example. It's got the ability Shuffle. Once during your turn, you may search your deck for another unknown and switch it with this one. It's very cool. 
Now, there were two that were really played. One was Unknown Eye. Two energy. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the defending. Your opponent chooses which defending Pokemon to switch out. But again, that's only relevant in doubles, which wasn't played all that much. But essentially, this was just here to grab a Pokemon from your opponent's bench. And you got to choose. Yay! Like, you chose the incoming one. And then we got Burned and Confusion. Yeah, that was pretty good. The other one that saw play was Unknown E, which had Hidden Power Single Colorless Energy. If your opponent's bench isn't full, you look at his or her hand, choose a basic Pokemon you find there and put it onto their bench. And then switch it with the defending Pokemon. So basically, if they had a Pokemon in their hand, you could make them bench it and then put it into the active, as long as obviously it was a basic. That was really cool. It let you get some lovely surprise KOs, and I enjoyed it greatly. Now, in terms of the trainer cards here, we had some nice reprints. Boost Energy and Warp Energy were cool reprints that came around originally in Sky Ridge. We had a reprint of Professor Realm's Training Method and Pokemon Reversal. All very good cards, but not particularly new. In terms of new, one card that was really good at the time and saw play in a lot of decks that does not look good nowadays is Mary's Request. Now, Mary's Request was a supporter card that let you draw one card, but if you didn't have any Stage 2s in play, you drew three. So you were able to draw three cards just so long as you did not have a Stage 2 in play. Which sounds ridiculous, right? Nowadays, we get generic cards like Cheren, Tiano, How, Hop. These are your generic, hey, I'm your friend in the video game cards, and they let you draw three cards... And they're basically just used as theme deck fodder and played by newer players until they get good supporter cards. And yet Mary's Request saw play, and you didn't even automatically draw three cards. It's the way the format was at the time. We didn't have a huge amount of pure draw in terms of supporter cards, and this ended up being a really good option. Solid Rage must be one of the best names we've ever had for a Pokemon card. I love it. And it was a Pokemon tool that you attached to one of your Pokemon. And if you had more prize cards remaining, you were losing the game. You did an extra 20 damage. Now, bearing in mind that it was a time with much lower HP, doing an extra 20 damage was huge. Now, it could only be attached to an Evolved Pokemon and could not be attached to an EX. So, it was an evolved non-EX. So, they did limit it somewhat. But an extra 20 damage was really good. Fluffy Berry was another very cool named card, although very different. And this just gave you free retreat. Simple as that. Now, again, it had to be a non-EX Pokemon. And non-Dark and non-Owner's Pokemon. So, not an EX, not a Dark, not an Owner's Pokemon. But then you got Retreat Cost of Zero. And Retreat Cost of Zero is really good. And then we saw Energy Root. Now, Energy Root was a fun one. Energy Root gave you an extra 20 HP. Although, again, it could only be attached to a non-EX, non-Dark, non-Owners Pokemon. But this extra 20 HP was huge. It was really good, for instance, with the Wheezing from Deoxys that had the attack Liability. You put the defending Pokemon 10 damage away from being KO'd. Hopefully you'd have poisoned them, for instance, so they'd take that 10 damage and be KO'd. But Wheezing did 70 damage to itself. It had 70 HP. It would KO itself, but no! Energy Root would save it. Go Energy Root. Now, I'll be honest with you, in terms of decks, we kind of have mentioned a lot of them, but we need to mention LBS. We didn't have necessarily the engine that LBS would use, but we did have the free constituent Pokemon at this stage. Lugia comes in, like I said, with that attack that did 200 damage. It was ridiculous. But you needed to accelerate energy onto it, and that's where Blastoise came in. Blastoise CX had been out for a little while. But what we saw here was, as often as you like during your turn, you may attach a water energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon 
as long as you put one damage counter on them. Okay, that wouldn't give you a single turn Lugia, but it would give you a two turn rather than a three turn Lugia. That's pretty big. It would turn that Steelix we talked about that could snipe for 100 damage from a four turn to a two turn Pokemon, two turns to attack to fighting, and then the two colorless would be water attached by Blastoise. Now, we're not actually there yet. Like I said, we didn't have the engine for this deck, but we then did have tricks like Holland's Electrode, for instance, which let you attach as an energy card to one of your Pokemon that already had an energy on it, and when you attached it, you returned an energy to that Pokemon to your hand. So what you would do is use Blastoise to attach, say, free water energy to a Steelix, you would swap one of those water energy for Holland's Electrode, and then it would actually count as the two fighting energy, and oh my goodness, this worked fast. This deck will come up more as we go through. It really did need the Holon's energy to become really good. But this was a point where we got all the constituent Pokemon. It is worth noting that Latias Star was also a phenomenal Pokemon. Because for free energy you did 50 damage. But 150 to an EX. And again we could pay the attack cost rather easily. Using Blastoise and those Holon energy cards. Now a similar kind of deck. And I do need to give a shout out to the lovely folks over at ptcgarchive.com. This is where I found this deck, and it was a deck I was unaware of. Now, I don't think it was one of the big decks at the time, but it's a cool deck, and I want to mention it quickly. It used Meganium EX in a very similar capacity to Blastoise. Again, it used the Holland Energy cards. Again, you had an EX that attached extra energy, though only one. But you did heal a damage rather than giving a damage, so that was quite nice. And then you would use a bunch of attackers. Steelix generally saw play. The cool thing is that this deck generally went for Latios rather than Latias. Because of the whole grass energy rather than water energy. And Latios was very cool. It did 150 to a stage 2 Pokemon. Similar kind of deck, but with Meganium rather than Blastoise. And the other decks that really came around from Unseen Forces we have already mentioned. Politoed Fossils was a deck I'm extremely fond of. It really was, and I should give a shout out to the lovely Jason Glazinski, whose blog I do use for looking up older decks. Very good blog, there'll be a link in the description. But Politoed really was just, uh, you know what? I'm going to get my Politoed rolling and just put loads and loads of fossils up. And then there's basically very, very little you can do here. It was an awful lot of fun. Big fan of this deck. This is the kind of deck I would have played at the time. And then the Sloking, Dark Sloking deck really did revolve around using Dark Sloking to attack using Litter. Don't sleep on the Poker Power that once during your turn let you look at the top card of your opponent's deck and then make them shuffle if you want. Try and ruin their top deck, i.e. if they're going to top deck something good, you make them shuffle. If not, you don't. And then you would have Slow King to search out those tools and as a really nice backup attacker as well. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That was EX Unseen Forces. A very good set that went back to Gen 2 somewhat inexplicably. Wasn't like there was a Gen 2 remake or anything at the time. And did bring in lots of playable cards and several good new decks. But now it's over to you guys. I want to know what you thought of this set. If you played at the time, I want to know what you played. If you didn't, I want to know what you would like to have played. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi And Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcg radio if you want to support the channel get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff head on over to patreon.com slash ptcg radio where you can do exactly that but by far the most important thing as always look after yourself till next time would you thank you very much for watching my name's ross and you've been watching ptcg radio